today in my series around Antwerp, we're visiting a fancier who has become a household name in England. I began to raise his family of pigeons very successfully around 1982-83 and in 1984 Bert Hessian and I purchased the second round of youngsters from his breeders. The rest, it's just history. And yes, you've guessed it, we're at the home and the loft of Staff Van Riet in Mol, Belgium. And right now, let's take the opportunity to go in and meet the family. So this is the team, Staff Van Riet, his son Ronnie, and Ronnie's new partner, Look. Hi, Look. Drop more. Thank you. That's lovely. What about you, Ronnie? Are you not bothered? Thank you. No, no, okay. All right. Staff, you remember this letter that you wrote to me um, in October uh, 84, which goes on to say that uh, thank you for your letter, my letter of the 1st of October, and it's the confirmation of the uh, second round of youngsters from your breeding loft that uh, both Hessian and I picked up. I've kept that in my scrapbook actually for posterity because uh, it's a very important letter. That was the start of the Staff Van Riet era in England. Now looking at the entrance to Staff Van Riet's lofts and as we look at them we can see the one with the Avery, that's the one with the Pantile roof, that's the breeding loft. The one directly above that, that is the loft where the six widowers flew to which won 115 first prizes, 115 and 117 first prizes, I can't remember the exact number. And it looks as though there's a loft over that, in fact there isn't, it's just airspace for the loft with the six widow cocks in. And to the left you will see another open window, and that open window there is where Staff flew his 18 widow cocks to. Those 18 have now gone up to uh, 24 or 26. Front view there then of the lofts, as you know they're over the top of Staff's house, a bit difficult to film them actually, but our cameraman managed to get himself into a position in Staff's father-in-law's garden, which is across the road, and uh, we filmed them from there. You will see each side of those lofts, there are roofs at each side, and on the top of those roofs there's some moss. I think Staff would have to be careful with his pigeons going on there, because there's no doubt about it, moss is the worst thing that you can have around for your pigeons. It is definitely poisonous and something to be avoided at all costs. So now we're in the uh, breeding loft of uh, Staff Van Riet. The breeding loft is in the attic, as is the racing loft which is next door, and also the loft to which Daniel flew just above us here. That's a very, very small loft and we'll get the opportunity to have a look in there uh, shortly. Uh, I say it's a small loft at the time that Daniel flew. It was Daniel, Dicker Prince, and the Prince. Daniel won 57 first staff, was it? 57. Dicker Prince? Uh, 26. And uh, the Prince? 32. 32. And which one is it that uh, Grandela brought? Was it the Prince? The Prince, and he was the sire of the Stuka uh, for Grandela. Father of the Stuka. Father yes. of the Stuka, yeah. yeah. So, in here in the breeding loft, uh, when I came about uh, 1984, I think there were 16 boxes, but now, staff, you have an extra four boxes, and there, yes, yes. there are about uh, 20 boxes, 20 breeding pairs. As you can see, it's nothing fancy, nothing fancy at all. In fact, when you look at some of these boxes, they must have been here. How, how old are these boxes? More than 70 years, More I think. than 70 years the, old. The loft is built in, in, in 1924. Which box was Daniel bred in? Can you remember? I think, I think it was this one. Yeah? I yeah. think. I'm not 100% not sure yeah. because I have had so many breeders over all, all those years. Yeah, yeah. But Daniel was not a beautiful handling breeder, was no. he? Deep. Not, no, not deep, but long, a long, a long pigeon. Yeah. And when I, I, I gave it to people in the hand, they, they said, oh, it's not so beautiful. But when I said he has 57 first prizes, then he was beautiful. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> always the same, always the same. <coughs> what was the sire of Daniel? Can you remember the father? The, the sire mother? of Daniel was a son of a cock that I became from the breeding station of the Scheemaker. Ah, uh, yeah. The father of the father of the, from the Daniel was a red, a red cock. So he would be Herman of Luther? Yeah. That's interesting now, because the the red line that you have, is, uh, of which Vos Wittekop and uh, the other Vale mm -hmm. Pigeons, uh, um, they they were from Hermans of Leithargen, and as we saw at the loft of uh, Marcellus, the red line he has comes from Herman of Leithargen. But Herman of Leithargen actually had his pigeons from Rickle, and they were the fond flyers, the long distance flyers. Oh, yes. So now you're using the fond flyers for sprinting, for the short oh, yes. distance, yeah. But yeah. I crossed them with, with uh, Janssen pigeon, eh? Janssen. 
Did you go direct to Janssen for oh, Many times. Every year I, I, I pay them a visit. But uh, every three years I bought a few pigeons. Yeah. All good ones? All good ones. Yeah. By Janssen on that, on that time. Uh, when, you, when you needed good pigeons, you go to Janssen, you had very good ones. What was that, in the 70s? In the 60s and the 70s. 60s and the 70s. All, all very good pigeons. And what was the price of the pigeons then? From, uh, the first one I bought was... 1,750 francs. Was it? Yeah. But that it was a lot of money on that time. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. But now now they talk about uh, the, the last 10 years they talk about 50,000 yeah. for, for an egg. Yeah, for, for an egg. A little one. Yeah, yeah. But but in that time the pigeons from Janssen were good pigeons. The best of of, of, of everywhere. Yeah. Best of everywhere. Another good pigeon you brought in was from the Engels. Yeah. I've seen, I've seen him in the pedigree quite a bit. Karel Schellens. Karel, Karel, yeah. But Karel Schellens, his, his best breeder came from Engels, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is Karel Schellens related to you? Is he related? He's related to, uh, to my father, yes? Yeah, yeah, I thought so. Because we went to the uh, restaurant with Karel Schellens, the yes. and yourself yes. many years ago. Enjoyed that, yes. When are these pigeons paired together, sir? Here. Uh, the 24th or the 25th of November. I always, always every year. bring them together. The last 20 years, yes. Yeah. And how many rounds of youngsters? Oh, I, I breed all year. They, but I never sell eggs or anything. I let oh. them do naturally, yeah? Yeah. Uh, all, all year through, till, till September. Yeah. But they have nothing to do but to so breed. So six, uh, six rounds. And I don't force them. I, I just leave them. Just leave them. Yeah. Let them do it. Eh? And you you come in. You feed them twice a day. Yes, twice a day. With the breeding mixture. Just same mixture oh, for everything. Same mixture as for everything. You just use a cheap mixture. Uh, and I I buy some peas, green extra peas, peas, extra. Yeah. And when they are with youngsters, I give more peas. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. They, they more, protein. more protein. Yes. Yes. And do these pigeons go out stuff outside? These go not not out anymore. The no. breeders and no not. They kept anymore. it and they have a little bath in the Avery. Because the most have been racing, eh? Yeah. Most of them. Yeah. And in here we have just the grit and the pig stone. Uh, yeah, that's in, the, in oh, this one. Eh? All, in, all in the hopper here. Yeah. yeah. So and the food goes in there as well as food we can see. So it's grit, pig steam. Uh, pig stone yeah. and food, all yeah. in the hopper. How old is the hopper? Oh, from before the war, I from think. From before the war? Yeah. And here we've got the drink pot. Yeah. Just plain water. Clear water. No, nothing in. No, never. 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 Just, just clear water. Clear water, yes. Yep, I think that's the reason the pigeons were so successful in our country. You fly um, Kivrain and occasionally Noyon. Uh, and only widowed cocks. Only widowed. Only widowed cocks. Yeah. When does the racing season finish for you? Uh, I always stop uh, with the, with the bit widowers uh, on the first Sunday of August. First Sunday of August. Is the last yeah. last flight. And after after the season has finished, when do you place the new young cocks in the widowed section so they may take their boxes? It's every year different. When I have the time, I do it on the end of the year. And other times, uh, when I couple everything, uh, uh, and on the end of November. End of November. No, okay. it's, it's different. But you don't race young pigeons, do you? Never, never. never. In fact, very rarely do you keep young pigeons here. I don't keep young pigeons here. I have a garden two miles from here. Yeah. And uh, Ronnie, my son, I bring the, the, young, the young pigeons to Ronnie yeah. and he treats them and, and let them learn, learn them on. And then on the end of the season I bring them to my loft. Eh? Yeah. 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 I bring them to old hens, the yeah. cocks. And how long does it take you to get them used to the new loft? Oh, uh, one, two times. One, two times. Uh, the one who, who which dure longer are not good. They are yeah. too stupid. Mm. Now. The one thing that uh, Fancy is watching this video will notice is that uh, normally I would have some products on the table, but there are no products on the table. Uh, when I first came to see Staff in uh, 84, I asked him how often he treated his pigeons for uh, trichomonas or canker, and at that time he said, never. I said, do you treat for anything? He said, nothing. And the only thing that ever goes into the water pot here is pure water. It was like that then, and it's like it now. 
I think one of the reasons that the staff van reef pigeons have been so successful in England is they've got a superb immune system. And that's been developed simply because staff never treats. I believe he did one street for uh, Kanker when he was flying in partnership with Verbruggen and you had a super performance in the national staff. In Limoges. In Limoges. Can you remember the, the places you had in the national? Was it uh, second? Do you begin with second? No. Uh, I had seven pigeons. I, I, I basketed 11 pigeons and I began with the, the national, eh? with the fourth, the seventh, don't remember just, but the, the, the seven pigeon had a 26th prize. So it, yes. you've, got in, you've got seven pigeons in the first 26 yes. of the national from Limoges? From Limoges in 1975. In 75. And you treated the pigeons for trichomonose or canker week before or just before they went to the race? Can you remember? A week before. A week before. A week before. And what did you use? Uh, it was M. Trill. A, a man of, of turnout brought me that. He said, you must give that once to your pigeons. Yeah. Uh, because it's good for, for trichomonas, eh? yeah. and I did it, and I had a fantastic result on Limoges, and also with the young pigeons on that time, we, there we raised also young pigeons, also on Montargis with the young pigeons, yeah. everything away, all, all the best prizes. And then afterwards, what happened? Wow, well, it, it, didn't, it didn't work anymore afterwards. Did you try it again? I tried it again two times and it didn't work anymore. No good. So you've never used it from then on? Never used it again. Just water? Just water, yes. Um, at this time of the year, do you give your pigeons any special mixture for malting or is it the same all the time? It's the same all the time, but I, I, I buy, on, on the end of the year, I buy, I buy a mixture of some seeds. Right. Uh, seeds small seeds. Small, small seeds. And, you and give I, that? I give that with, with a normal mixture. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so you mix it in? Oh, I, I take it in another pot and I give it some hands. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's not just, just a little bit. Yeah, um, how often do you let the pigeons out during this time of the year? Normally they are always out after the season, day and night. I have a small entrance for the pigeon that's yeah. always open. They can go out and in like that. So in day England, and night. England we would say open loft all open, the time, open in loft. and out, all the time. Uh, till I, till I, till the end of November when I start again by, by, for breeding. Yeah. And then I must keep them a week in, to, 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 that they have the boxes and everything. Yeah. And then again, they have the little, the little out, yeah. to go out and... So as soon as the pigeons have got the boxes and they start to lay their eggs in and out again, in and out free loft all the yeah. time. Yeah. Till uh, three weeks before the races start. And then I start to, uh, by doing it. Uh, in the evening, let them out. Yeah. Now, when do you take the youngsters away uh, from the racing pigeons? How many days are we? 20, 22, 24? 22. 20, 21, 20. 22. Yeah. And do the hens lay again, the females? No, when, uh, that's in winter, eh? and then they don't lay so, 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 <coughs> right. so, so fast. Eh? So you take the youngsters away, and, and the, the, hens away. the hens away, and, the hens away. and then the cocks are alone. The cocks are on with it, eh? You don't bring the hens back and pair them again no, before, no, before the season? No, never, never, never. Never. The cocks then start on the widow. Yes. And then they go out once per day. Once a day, in the evening. Between 4.30 till about 6, yes. when the weather is yes. right to do yes. that. Yes. Yeah. That's it. And is that the time you start the feeding system with the barley? Yes. <coughs> this is something I think the viewers will be very interested in. When I first came to see staff, I thought his feeding system was quite unique. He'd actually designed it around his lifestyle because staff normally used to go to bed at four and five in the morning. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Your mum will go to bed. But it's right to bed. Yeah, four and five in the morning and probably gets up about half past twelve to one. I think that I know that's right, one o'clock, because I used to call around for him at twelve o'clock and he never got up at one o'clock. So this system was designed around his lifestyle. And it consisted of a hopper full of barley, always in front of the pigeons, apart from the night before basketing day. So, barley in the pot all the time, or sorry, in the hopper <coughs> all the time. And then, after the pigeons had exercised for one and a half hours in the afternoon, they used to come in to a spoonful of sport mixture. Now, staff doesn't buy any particular brand of sport mixture. It's the cheapest, isn't it, staff? Mm -hmm. Whichever is the cheapest, but looks good. Yes. The, the corn must be good. Yeah. yeah. Now, 
Every time they come back in, they have a spoonful of that in the box. In the box, yes. How big is the spoon stuff? It's a soup spoon, a, a, soup spoon. a normal soup, soup spoon. spoon. So that's a 15 mil spoon in our uh, in our country, in uh, England. Was it flat or was it raised? Whoa! In in the beginning of the week, flat, and and on the end of the raised, raised, raised yeah. yes. And then you basket the pigeons on Saturday for racing Sunday. Yes. And all Saturday, the barley is out of the hopper, and the food is in the hopper. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that's the way you did it. Yeah. And you still do it that way today. Still. Still today. do it that way. And the pigeons just go out once a day for one and a half hours. Yes. Do you lock the windows? Must they stay out, or, uh, or can they come in and out? I, I, that I changed. Right. Before I, I, I let the windows open, and now I close them. So they have to stay out for they one have and to a stay half. Stay out. And when you open the windows, the pigeons come straight right. back in. That's why I do it. Yeah. So they all come in together. Come straight in together. And that is then in the box. That's in the box. In the box. One soup spoon. Yeah. But the pigeons are never hungry because there's barley in the hopper on yeah. the floor all the time. And always, when I give no barley, yeah, they, they may have, have, have had just their spoon, eh? yeah. they go back to the barley and, and take to, some barley. Yeah, to fill up. Yeah, to fill, to fill up, up yeah. yes. Yeah. It's an excellent system, that, there's no doubt about it. Now, before you start to race, before the first race, mm -hmm. how many times do you take the pigeons away training, the widow cocks? Three times. Oh. Uh, myself with the car, two times, and then they go to, to 80 kilometers. Yeah. So the, how far do you take them in the car? The first time 20 kilometers, the, 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 the second time 30, and then 40. And then they go together with the basket, with, the, with all the with pigeons the together, with the club, for a, a, a training. And how far is that? 80 kilometers. 80 kilometers, about 50 miles. Yes. Yeah. yes. Now, once you've done that, do you take them by car again in the season? No, no never. Just, never. Just exercising? Training around yeah, the loft. Around the yeah. loft, yes. So, three times and then once with the club. Now, when you take them away, do they see the hens when they come back? Yes. Training. So, you... No. 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 But by letting them out. No, 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 no. no. By the, the, the car. From the training. Always the, the hens in the, in, the, in, the, in the box. In the box, yes. The bowl? The yeah. bowl also. So, you give them the book. Is the bowl in the box all the time, all week, and then no. you turn it over? No. no. You no. take the bowls away, don't you? Take the bowls away, yes. And then, before you, before the hen, the bowl. For how long? The bowl. How long do you give the bowl to the cock before you bring the hen? I come in, in, in the loft, I, I put the bowls in, I start bit by showing the hens. Right, so once all the bowls are in, then yeah. you bring the hens in. Then I bring one, one before, after another. Yeah. How long does the hen stay with the, the cock? Oh, a few seconds. That's all? Yes. But Just when they come home, yeah. they stay in, in uh, about 15 minutes together. 15 minutes. Is that from Kivrein? Yes, and, and Noyo also. And Noyo. Yeah. Same, if it doesn't matter whether it's Kivrein or Noyo, no, they only stay for about no, 15 no, minutes. No difference. I won't ask you what the water program is throughout the week because I know what it is. It's just plain water, just plain water yes, all the time. Yes. When the pigeon come back from the race, do you put anything special in the water? No, no never. Water, right? Um, you, you, they have grit in front of them all the yes. time, and pig stone and in pig front stone, yes. all the time. Uh, how many cocks do you race now, sir? How many racing cocks? Uh, I can put now 26 on one loft and 10 on the other loft. Which which is the loft they fly the better to? Which loft do they fly the best to? It's the same. Same? Same. No difference. Apart from when you had Daniel Dick Prince yeah. and Prince. I always put it that I thought were the best on yeah. above. But that happens once in a lifetime, doesn't yeah. it? I had one white nose, just one pigeon in my lifetime. Yeah. Um, what about the females? You keep them all in little boxes. What about feeding them stuff? What do you feed them? Uh, the, the normal food I have, the, the, the cheapest food they, they have. Same I, as the cocks? I, yeah, I give them one soup spoon a day. Right. The uh, cocks two soup spoons uh, yeah. and, and the hens only yeah. one soup spoon. Right. But at the beginning of the week for the cocks, it's a flat soup spoon. Yes. And then as the week goes on, yeah. a little bit more of the mm -hmm. corn. Right. Yeah. What about the bath? Can the pigeons take a bath? Oh, yes. Uh, every week, on uh, Tuesday, we put yep. a, a bath on the loft. 
in the loft or on the loft outside? Uh, we put it, the last years we put it in the loft. Yeah, yeah. Anything in the bath water or just plain no, water? No, nothing, water. Just plain water. plain water. Do you use anything on your pigeons to keep the, uh, the mites and the ticks off? No. no. Nothing? Nothing. All very natural. This is the larger of the two racing lofts. The lofts that Daniel, Dicker Prince and the Prince flew to are upstairs above this. We'll go and have a look at that in a minute. But this is his main racing loft. And if I remember rightly, there were 18 boxes in here. Is that right, Steph? 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. Yeah. Yes. And just recently, you've added another 2, 4, 6, 8. Or yes. Ronnie has your son. He decided to add another 8. But there used to be 18 racing cocks during the 80s and the 90s. And as you can see, these boxes here, they're very old, very old. How old are these stuff? Oh, I don't know. My, my grandfather has let them build. Uh, yeah. At least maybe 40 years ago. Yeah, yeah. Very, very old boxes. You wouldn't get them like this today, but they're functional. As you can see uh, from looking at this loft here, there's uh, it's not spotlessly clean, but it's very functional. When staff said to me, this is a very good loft, Dave, I had to look twice and say, you say it's a good loft, but, but why? And he explained to me that it's very dry, very dry indeed, and in the summer it is very warm. And whilst there is cover over the roof there, if you look through there, there is plenty of air can get up there. And all glass there, so the sun shines in beautifully. Staff, you're holding a pigeon there now. One thing you will notice about Staff Van Riet, he's a wonderful handler of pigeons. In fact, it's said that he's probably one of the best selectors around at this moment in time, and he is. I've always admired the way that Staff holds a pigeon. Staff, what, is he one of the best racers? Yes, he was, the, the last four years, the best one. Yeah? He won ten uh, pure first in the big... Big club. Big, big birdie. Yeah. Pigeons, yeah. Yes, and uh, always ahead. Uh, he, he never fails, he's always yeah. very early. Yeah. Which is the line of this pigeon stuff? Uh, his father is half soldiers. Half soldiers, yeah. Father, yeah. half soldiers. But the mother, the mother is pure of, of my old strain. The old strain. Mother is a daughter of the Daniel. Yeah. Mother is a daughter of the Daniel. It's a beautiful Yeah, mother of the, of the cock. Yeah, of the father. Yeah. It's a beautiful pigeon, lovely, lovely oh, balance and everything. Very good pigeon. Yeah. One of the best I have ever had in my life. Yeah? Yes. It's a good one. It's a good one. Yeah. Where's his box? Which is his box? Here is his box. But he never stays in. Good boy. So we've taken a look in the uh, large racing lot now. I think perhaps it might be an idea, Staff, if we were to go upstairs and have a look at this tiny little lot where. Daniel, Dicker Prince and the Prince flew. So we're now standing in uh, the loft which Daniel, Dicker Prince and the Prince flew to. As you can see, there are six boxes down there. Two, four, six. Very old boxes. Staff, your grandfather flew in here when? The 19... Since the 20s? Since the 20s. Yeah. Since, since and there was always just six boxes in here. Six a boxes. Apart from over the last few years, Ronnie has put an extra yeah. four down there. Yes. But yes. always six boxes. So the pigeons were there and here. Here are the windows where the birds go out. If I can just... Go there. Pigeons fly out there. In total, I would say that this loft is about two meters square. No more, no more. Now, Staff, which was the box that Daniel flew to? That was the box of the Daniel. And he had 57 first prizes? 57. Yeah. And here was the Prince. And he had? 32 first prizes. Yeah. And here was the Dicker Prince. Yeah. 26 first prizes. Yeah. They were three brothers. Yes. Yeah, so like 20, 40, 70, 70, 80, for 80 odd prizes. First prizes with three brothers. Yes. Yeah, all wonderful pigeons. Yes. Yeah, fantastic pigeons. Very simple loft, very old hopper on the floor, small water pot, grit, and pig stone. And that's, I can show you no more, that's it. It's just a very, very small loft. The air goes out there and it comes in there. Pigeons come in and out here. 
How do these nest boxes work, stuff? Because that pull, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, very, very simple. Yeah. I see, yeah. And there, uh, yeah, the ball the goes, yeah. And the, the, hen, the hens are there, and yeah. then so it stands. The cock stands and the cocks come, come yeah. in. Eh? Yeah. I race here since 45, and I've won here on this loft more than 500 first prizes. 500 first prizes. More, this, more than 500. To this tiny little six yeah. foot square loft yeah. with just six boxes in it. Yeah. And those boxes, by the way, they're about 12 inches, 24 inches, and in depth they are 10. 20 and they're about 22 inches in depth. Very simple widowed uh, boxes as you can see. Both that side opens and that side opens and then there's just a slider down there. And they are they are maybe one of the first widow widow boxes, boxes in, in Belgium yeah because my grandfather raced uh, since uh, 1933 I think. He races with a wood on this loft. In 19, from 1930, yeah. yeah. Fantastic. He must must Fantastic. be one of the first of Belgium. Yeah, and did he build the boxes? Yeah? Uh, did he make uh, the boxes? He, he let them build by another man, by I another think. By another man, yeah. And these, and these are still the original fittings, yeah. all these, yeah? They're all, all original, yes. Yeah, yeah. Look how old the hinges are, yeah? And you just occasionally, do you whiten? They must be older than me, I'm 65, they must be older than me. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I wanted all the viewers to have a look at the loft that uh, Daniel Prince and the Dicker Prince flew to. Staff just explained, over 500 first prizes to this small loft. Fantastic results. Yeah. So I'm now coming out of the, uh, the loft with the uh, six next boxes for Daniel, etc. I once remember writing a ring number on this wall around about 1984 of a young cop that I said to staff, I think that will make a super pigeon. But he's done something very unusual. He must have painted it out. It's not very often he does things like that, but anyway, there you go. So we're still in the upstairs attic part of uh, Staff Van Reed's home, where the loft is. Through there, the breeders. Up above there, the loft for six. Widowed Cox with the Daniel, etc. And further through there was the first loft we filmed for the racing, which was the larger loft. Now here, at this side of the corridor, is the, uh, is the venue or the place where staff keeps his widowed hens. And they're kept very simply, they're all individually boxed. And what staff does in the season is he place a sheet of newspaper under the box there. As you can see, the pigeons stand on some wire. The droppings come out there. Once a week he takes the newspaper out, puts it in a bucket and replaces it with new newspaper. That's the water pot. It's a simple um, flora dish, it's been well washed out, and the food is in a pot like that. But uh, during the season the pigeons are on, uh, the hens are on uh, barley nearly all week. So that's it, that's how they live. They don't get any bad feathers or anything as you can see because uh, um, in these boxes there's plenty of room to move about. They're not cramped, so the pigeons are always in good condition, the hens are anyway and they were always ready to go to see the cocks at the weekend. So, very simple system. Keep, and it's important to keep the hens in good condition, and as you can see here, they are in good condition. One, two, three, four, 16 boxes there, and 16 boxes at this side, which face the window. Okay, so there you've got a rough idea of now how staff keeps his hens. He keeps them well, in good condition. Um, do you remember in 84, I came, uh, and, and you took me to the antique dealer to see the Daniel. Oh, yes, yeah. yes. And, uh, but unfortunately he was not there. He was with Grandma. Ah, uh, yeah, because uh, he, yes, he, he yeah. Remember, because he would stop filling his eggs then, didn't he? Yeah. Was it 84 when he finished the Daniel? I think so, something like that, or 85. I, I don't know, if, don't I don't exactly. remember exact. Yeah. But he was from 76, eh? And I think he filled his eggs till till nine years or something like that. Nine, yeah, yeah. And what about was uh, Dicky Prince and that and uh, the Prince from the same year? Can't remember that. What year were they from? Uh, Prince was from '72. Yeah. And I think Dicky Prince '74. Right. And between those three pigeons, they won how many first prizes? Can you remember? It's two, four, six. Eight, about 90 first prizes, something like that, between them. The Daniel had uh, 57. Yeah. The the Prince 
32 and Dickie Prince 26. Yeah, yeah. Well, the fans will be able to have that up. Um, Staff, you put a few pigeons in the basket. Can we have a look at some of your better breeding pigeons? Oh, yes. Uh, yes. Looks going to pass on to us. Uh, whilst we're doing that, I can just explain to the viewers that um, Look and uh, Staff's uh, son Ronnie are going to fly together next year. Are you building a lot now, Ronnie? Yes, I'm very busy building. Busy. How long will it be before it's ready? I hope uh, in the beginning of January. And then your father is going to breed three rounds of youngsters here to yes. take over there. Yes. And he says he's going to finish uh, racing here then. Yes. So it will be the end of an era because yes. pigeons have been raised here for about uh, 75, 75 years. 75 years. years. Yes. So do you think he really will stop racing or do you think he may still be? I think he's now certain he will stop. So, and he's yes. going to come across and help you and yes. the uh, end up. Advisors. Yeah, Luke's been a good man with the pigeons, yes, hasn't he? Was, good, yes. was he last year? He was. Uh, last year he was second national. This year he's third national. Yeah. Middle distance. Middle distance. Yeah. yeah. Last year he was, he was first of the province of Antwerp. Yeah. For about fifteen thousand pigeon men. Eh? Yeah. On middle yeah. distance. And middle and distance. second of Belgium, fifty-five thousand. Eh? Yeah. Is that middle distance? Yeah. Middle, middle distance, distance yeah. and is that what you're going to fly? Middle distance, or are you going to go for? Yes, the, the most important middle distance, ook met snelheid ook. Yeah, young and old. Yeah. Young and old. I play only with the young birds, and Ronnie with the old. Right. Okay. We want uh, specialized. Yes, yeah, sp specialized. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's look at the pigeons. What's this one, Stan? That's the winter blixen. Yeah. And that is he bre does he breed good pigeons? Give you good pigeons? Very good pigeons. He, he is a son of the Blixem, yeah. who won 17 first, 18 first prizes. Yeah. And the mother won the first national of La Souterraine. The Blixem is with uh, Dean Pallet now? Yes. Yeah, with Dean, yeah. And he is, when I, when I knew I, I would sell him to, to, Dean. to Dean, I brought the first national of La Souterraine to him. And, and I breed it him. So that's out of the Blixen, which has 18 first prizes, and the pigeon which won first national La Souterraine. Mm -hmm. And he's a very good breeder. So what is the mother and the father to the La Souterraine national winner? That was by Verstappen, eh? Ah, you flew with Verstappen. With Verstappen. Yeah, the, yeah. I, I, I get the hen from yeah. Verstappen and brought it to the Blixen, eh, to, to breed him. Eh? Viewers will know that Staff's a wonderful handler of pigeons. I've always no. admired. No, I, I, I always admire the way you select pigeons. Always do. But it's a beautiful. Yeah, let's have a look at himself. Yeah, he's, he's he's typical of this family of pigeons. I think it's because of the way Staff selects. He always selects pigeons that are beautifully balanced. And just look at that. I've always said that for a pigeon to be, for me to come right into the hand, it has to be beautifully balanced. And and when I say beautifully balanced. The tail should be an extension. I'm not one that looks for pigeons that have tails that go down and the rump sticks up like that. I prefer the tail to be the natural extension of the pigeon and for it to go straight out. And that does. It's a beautiful pigeon. Beautiful pigeon. Just one to go. Yeah. Right. Did he? Was he raced, staff, or did he no, straight into no. the breeding lot? He came straight never out. Lot. He never came out. Okay. Can you pop that one back yeah. in? So the guy yes. Yes. Okay. Right. Yeah. And this is the Grote Tom. Derek Tom, yeah. Derek Tom. That's a pigeon of 89 that I breeded with Jos Songes together. Ah, uh, yeah. This the is father, the cross, yeah. The father was a son of the fantastic breeding pair of Jos Songes. Yeah. Jos Songes. Yeah. And uh, I brought him to here and I put it, a daughter of the Daniel on, 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 right. on that cock. And that's the son. Right. And he, is, he brings only champions. All my best pigeons are coming from him. Bigger, Bob, bigger Bob than, Jill. bigger than mine, yes. Yeah, bigger, but again, well balanced. Look, yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Look, good plumber. Yeah, yeah, good plume. Soft, good, good feathers, soft. soft feather, and the tail Very soft. straight out. Beautiful. Important. He's lovely balanced pigeon, but a bit bigger than yours. Yeah. That is because of the cross. Yes. The cross. But he is the the the, the stamfather of my pigeons now. The the. He's the stud sire of yeah. the loft. He is his father and and, and grandfather. And over grandfather of all my best pigeons. So all the good pigeons come out. And also him. him. Yeah. Yeah. How old is he stuck, this one? 89. 89. 89, so he's 11 years old, yeah. Yes. And that's the first cock I breeded out of him. Yeah. That's the favorite. The favorite. Yeah. I gave him to another man, and but he didn't come in by that man. Yeah. But he won 
a young pigeon, 11 times the second prize. Yeah. And then I brought him to me, yeah. and the first time I, he, he was going uh, the first first prize, second time again the first prize, yeah. and he was always, but he, he he always waited 30, 40 seconds to come in yeah. on, on the on, in the window. In, in England we say he's a bad trapper. If he'd gone straight in, he would have won how many first prizes probably? How many first he has? No. He has uh, eight first and 37 times top ten. Eight first and 37 times top ten. Again, he's just a little bit bigger stuff there. Yeah, so he's like, like, his, like yeah, his father. Yeah, like his father. Yeah. But again, beautiful balance. Beautiful balance. Good feather. Good feather. Ah, good feather. He's from 92. He's now on the breeding loft. Does he have a name? He has been the yeah. favorite. He has been picked, picked in the eye. I can and see I have done, done something. Small throat. Small throat. Oh, very good pitch. Yeah. Oh, his age is unbelievable. Yeah, he is, yes. Unbelievable. Yeah. 11 years old, isn't it? Yeah, he's like good How old is this one against him? 92. 92. 92. Eight years okay. older. So they're three of your best breeders, and we've looked at one of the best races upstairs with mm -hmm. the uh, checker cock, the girl shepherd. Just remind me, Steph, how many first prizes does he have? The the one we handled in the racing loft? Ten, 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 ten first ten prizes. But also, it, it doesn't come in neither. Uh, he, he has of, always been by the 10th first, so always. Eh? I've got a good idea how you can get these pigeons to come in. Mm -hmm. Put Teresa in the lot. All no. the males will come in. Oh, yeah? Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> right, so I hope that I've asked most of the questions that the viewers would want to know of staff. Uh, there is just one thing I think I should probably tell you, that he's going to uh, breed these three rounds of youngsters from his breeding pigeons and from the racing pigeons, all of which we've seen today upstairs. Um, and which will be paired together in November. You breed three rounds which will go <coughs> across to the new lofts of Ronnie and Look. And then all the pigeons from the Van Reet loft here are going to be sold. I don't know whether that's good news or bad news. I think really it's very sad to think that for 70 odd years we've been raising pigeons here and that they're no longer going to be there. The good news for English fanciers is that staff is going to sell all the birds in England. Uh, he's asked me if I will help him organise the sale, so it will be, you'll see the publicity in the Racing Pigeon and other journals as well, and um, I think they will be sold probably during the middle part of the year or middle to autumn part, but I think that before he sells them, I think he should also breed another round of youngsters to bring across with the pigeons, but that I can discuss with staff at a later day. So, that just about ends our interview today. With the famous Staff Van Riet, the pigeons which in our country, in England, have become an absolute uh, household name. In fact, many of them have become legends. I hope you've enjoyed the look round the lofts. I hope you've enjoyed meeting the family and also looking at the pigeons. Okay? Good.